Look, have a look down the outside of this truck. Come on, hurry up. Sight them anyway. Hey, they're a beautiful job, is aren't they? I'd feel like to see one with the guts hanging right out of it. <laughs> That's all we need. We soon get lumbered very smartly. That would be right. How about that bloke? Do you reckon he's dead? Well, I don't know. Most probably. Cool enough. Anyway, his worries are over. <laughs> we'll have to get rid of this shortly, though, this one. It'll get too hot. We get through the damn traffic. Uh, it might be a good idea to stay in it for a while. Hey, why don't we pull up at a newspaper shop and see how we're going? <laughs> <laughs> You're a comedian, mate, aren't you? I see if there's anyone behind us. Why don't you make that one at the back? Oh, relax, Grandma. You give yourself a heart attack. Is something going up fast, boys. Uh. Tell you what, it is like common. Yeah, I brought that. <laughs> I rip it up, a Teddy. <laughs> Damn it, we've lost him.
Oh, oh, take it doing? easy, Angelo. You won't get hurt. What the fuck are you doing? Leave him quiet. The car, my own property, it was for half a year. Are you buying it under high purchase? I pay cash for it on the spot. Insurance? Insured it is not. Careful driver I am. So, <laughs> insurance money is wasted. Well, I'm sure we'll find it for you, Mr. Kolak. I just hope they don't smash it up before we get it. Oh, they crash it? No, no, no. I hope this is not so. We'll do our best, Mr. Kolak. Don't despair yet. Very kind. I know the police do the best thing. Jackie, would you uh, type these notes up for Mr. Kolak and give them to him for signing? Yes. Will you wait, Mr. Kolak? How long I wait? About ten minutes. It's quite short. I wait then. Okay. Riveton. Good, thanks. We found your car for you, Mr. Kolak. Sir, on their way. Good. Well, this may be one time we don't need positive identification. We know who. We want to know where. Uh, they're probably miles away by now. They're a pretty smart pair. All right, Constable Brethren. You wait here till the headquarters boys arrive. And uh, tell Forensic if they find anything to contact us. Yes, sir. Come on, let's go. This afternoon, Inspector Dallas Buchanan issued a strong warning to the public to be wary of approaching either of the two men. Both are armed and must be considered extremely dangerous. Under no circumstances attempt to speak or apprehend them. Anyone citing the two suspects are requested to telephone police headquarters. Once again, here are photographs of the two suspects and their descriptions. Buchanan. Hello, Dallas. It's me. Well, Valine, how are you? Splendid. I've just been watching your commercial. Tonight's exciting episode in the continuing struggle between good and evil. Well, every business has to advertise. Well, I'll buy the product. It sold me. Well, thanks. It has all the earmarks of a good trailer. Short, to the point, and uh, nicely shrouded in mystery. I'll tell my scriptwriter you'll like the show. Incidentally, do you know this is the third time in a row you're going to cancel a date? Well, how did you know? Woman's intuition. Powerful thing. Well, happy hunting. Good night, Dallas. Good night, honey. Finally, if you see either of these two men, you are urged not to speak to them. Telephone immediately, police headquarters, or contact your nearest police station. Bad you guy. You've really got yourself in deep this time. Hope you make it, son. Who's the puppy dog? Lay off, will ya? He's edgy. Get him out of here. All right, all right. Just give us a chance to explain. You don't have to explain it. The whole bloody country knows. You're hot. 
Heard about you both on the radio. Listen, Gary, just give us a day or so. Let's get out of here. I don't you, like it. You shut up. Sit down. Listen, Beth. You heard me. Who are you talking to? Who do you think? Now, you cut that out. We're not in the clink now. The big show's over. We're free. So you can stop bossing me about. Okay, Bob. What are you going to do with your freedom? I could break your neck for one thing. But I prefer to say goodbye and go my own way. Well, what does a man have to do to get a drink around here? Over there, up yourself. Now you're here, you might as well make yourself at home. Yeah. What are we going to do for money? We'll get some. Where? It's Christmas time. There's lots of money around this time of year. Shops, banks. A bank? Why not? Why not? You're going to get out of the state? Yeah. Sydney, maybe. What's up, Sutton? Too scared to have us around? No, but the sooner you shoot through, the better I'll like it. How do you feel about having a murder for a guess that? Bed kill that truck he's stoned at. How about that, Sutton? Huh? <laughs> he's a big man. Shut your mouth or I'll shut it for you. You kill that truck driver. You're gonna hang for it. Correction. We're gonna hang. I couldn't go out with you. You're a bank robber. Well, that's not the only thing I'm good at. Come on, lover boy, shut the door. Anybody there? There's no more we can do at the moment, sir. There must be something, Dallas. We have 60 roadblocks in the northern roads. The whole state's in a 24-hour alert. And we're not only relying on our own men. Well, what are you doing? I've put the contact plan into operation. Oh, that's something. Local police have talked to hotel keepers, motel managers, grocers, bank managers, station owners in their hands, commercial travellers, anybody that Baird and Fitch are likely to come in contact with. Good. Well, you've done all you can, Dallas. Trouble is, nothing. God knows where Baird and Fitch are at the moment. Well, no one's blaming you. We'll just have to sit and wait and see what happens. Well, there is one thing, sir. What's that? I've had the draft and department work this up. Take a look at it. I think we'll just have to do this, sir. I can't ask the government to gazette a reward of $5,000 this soon. They'll just tell me to put more men onto it. It's Christmas Eve, Commissioner. All leave has been cancelled. Every available man is on duty. You've got to go to the government. But so soon after the escape. Look, time has nothing to do with it. They're sitting safe, and the longer we wait, the safer they get. We've got to act now. You're right, of course. All right, I'll see what I can do, but don't hold your breath. They've just got to see that a, a reward, a large reward, has a way of making the underworld forget its friends. I know what you mean. Sorry to interrupt, sir, but it's urgent. The bank was robbed ten minutes ago. Descriptions match. Baird and Fitch, how much? Around $25,000, maybe more. Day before Christmas. Banks hold a lot of money this time of the year. I know that, Riverton. Thank you. Now what? Look, now they have everything. A good hideout, all the money they can use, and the most important thing of all, the admiration of the underworld. All right, I'll see the Premier as soon as possible about the reward. There's just one more suggestion, sir. All right, let's have it. Oh, 
Oh, he'll leave it alone. What? You're like a ten-year-old kid. Good. That's better than being a whinger day in and day out. Well, you're not on a picnic. Ted knows everything. He's the smartest cookie in town. And he knows it better. Well, at least I know the mongrel pup's nipping at my heels. Oh, what do you mean by that? Just what I said. Uh, call me a mongrel. OK, OK. Brag it up. No fights in here. Not in my place or out you go. If you feel that way about it, we'll move out tomorrow. The sooner the better. Fine friends you've got. And my friends are all right. You're still in kindergarten. The state government has offered a reward of $10,000 for information leading to the arrest of notorious criminals Ted Baird and Bob Fitch. Police have been continuing their investigations and it's hoped that the government's move may lead to an early arrest. It's a lot of money. It sure is. Man could do a lot with 10,000 bucks. One word to the coppers in it have it. What do you reckon, son? Did you drop us in for 10,000? What are you getting at? It's a lot of money. You're stupid, Fitch. I'm no copper. <laughs> now what I know. Would you dob us in for 10,000? You be careful what you say. OK. But you never know who your friends are, especially with that kind of money laying around. <laughs> nah. No, no one will dob us in. Will they, sweetheart? Is there any more beer in the house? It's all gone. Sorry. <laughs> We're sitting on a fortune and running out of beer. I'll get some more. That's 10 to 10. It's only a couple of miles down the road. That'll make it all right. I'll come with you. There's no need to. I said I'll come with you. Suit yourself. Are you out of your mind or something, Pitchy? Someone will recognize you. No sweat. I stay in the car. Besides, I feel like a breath of fresh air. OK, Sutton. Let's go. Won't be long, five minutes or so. You better get moving or the pub will be shut. You'll be sweet, another public. She rang me. Oh, about an hour ago. She seems to want to get hold of you. Oh, well, I'll give her a tingle. Uh, you got change? 20 cents. Yeah, look. The bloody hell's keeping him. Yeah, love, yeah, yeah. You what? Yeah. Well, look, love, look, look, I'll see you tomorrow night, all right? Okay, fine.
she got into it that way. Love it's after 10 o'clock. Come on, the best one. Right on, Joey. Merry Christmas, man. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you, Gary. Hey, don't forget to hang out your stockings. Wouldn't mind if it was one of yours. <laughs> Good night. For God's sake, why didn't you stay in the car? What took you so long? Well, there was a mob in there. I could only get six. That took you long enough. Well, I had a phone call from the girlfriend. Girlfriend? Who are you kidding? Knock it off. What's biting you? Ten minutes to get a few larger bottles of grog. I was lucky to get any. Don't give me that. Hey, now move. Hey, now listen. Now, come on, get hey. moving. Listen, what the hell's the matter now, with you? Now, keep moving. What is the last supposed to have done? I think you made a $10,000 phone call. You what? Well, like I said, there was a fight, he got shot. Oh, you idiot. You poor stupid idiot. Cut it. You're not the only one who can use a gun. But I think first. But he was coming at me. It was self-defense. I'm through with you. You're stupid and you're dangerous. Well, he just might have blown a whistle on us. In fact, I think he dogged us in. What are you doing? I'm getting out of here. Well, where are you going? Where are you going? Let's see if I'd tell you. Ted, you don't think I'd squeal? <laughs> Me squeal? When Buchanan catches up with you, you'll tell him everything. Well, all the cops know about us. Something's dead. What did you do with the gun? Did you throw it away? No. Got it in. Did you bury the body? No. Didn't have time. So as soon as the cops find him, they'll be here in five minutes. Five minutes! Oh, you poor, dumb, stupid nothing. How do you know he squealed? Did you see him on the phone? Well, I didn't to the hotel. I saw him through the door talking on the phone. But you couldn't hear who he was talking to, could you? You don't know what he was saying. Oh, I thought... Oh, you thought? Well, he could have been squealing. Maybe he is a friend of yours, but he could have squealed. And you killed him! Can you get that through your head? You killed him! Was he a friend of yours? Was he? Oh, when you're on the run, how do you know who your friends are? You killed your first man. And now you're on your own. Well, listen to... Now, listen to me, will you? I thought that... Well, you know. I saw him on the phone and... The reward and everything. Well, I didn't know. All right, so I've made a bad mistake. I know that now. But you're the boss, Ted. You're in charge. What are we going to do? Yeah. City's on to, Inspector. All right, put him through. Buchanan. Merry Christmas, Dallas. Oh, thanks, Mike, and the same to you. What are you doing in your office on Christmas Day? Now, you know I never rest. Your story has touched my heart. <laughs> Look, we had an alarm out at Hay, but it turned out to be false. Anything down your end? No, uh, nothing. I think we've just got to wait. Yeah, I guess. Look, I'll keep you posted. You know, we're inclined to think there's still a hole up in Melbourne. You don't think they could be heading for Sydney? Suggesting they could get through our roadblocks? I don't know. They're your roadblocks. Again. 
Yeah, what's eating you? Well, what do you expect, sausages? Stuck in a stinking place all a stinking time. Well, I like bacon and eggs. Now, you can get a feed when you go out. Hey, <laughs> yesterday I had fried prawns with sweet and sour pork. It was delicious. Ted, do you reckon I could do what you've done? What? Dye your hair? Uh, get some new clothes. Well, it's all right for you. You can go out whenever you like. I can see no one, talk to no one. Stuck in this filthy dump all the time. Man may as well be in clink. <laughs> we got all that money and what use is it to us? Look, do you know what you want, Fitchy? Yeah, I know what I want. Well, tell me. I want a bird. Well, get out your little black book. It's all right for you. You're too old. <laughs> you're never too old, son. Well, you're over 40. I'm almost half your age. <laughs> no, you wouldn't understand. Anyway, you probably forgot. That'll be the day. Look, what do you want me to do? Go and get you a date. Hey, I got it. Oh, what? Well, that bird from Melbourne. She was down there on holidays. Remember, I, I told you about it before I went inside. I remember. You went to Luna Park. <laughs> that must have won it. <laughs> we had a ball. Yeah, she lived in Sydney. Now, where was it? Look, come on, Fitzy. Wake up. Oh, well, what do you mean? Well, your name's been in every paper. She'll remember you. No, she won't. What about your face? Well, what about it? It's been pasted in every newspaper every day. Oh, picture don't look like me. <laughs> no? No. Ah. Anyway, kind of job she's got, she sees hundreds of faces every day. What does she do? She'd nash her out at the Regal. Mm. Yeah, it's not such a bad idea. Female company. You'll be in it, then? Yeah, why not? <laughs> well, I'm not in a wheelchair yet. Tell you what I'll do. I'll go down to the phone box, and when the last show's run, I'll ring her up. Mm. Well, let me think about it first. There's no need to think about it. Tonight, Bob McDonald will ring Monica Marshall, and she'll be sweet. Are you absolutely sure? Positive. The name? Do you recall the man's name? Mm, no. But you could have used half a dozen names. Inspector... A woman sometimes remembers a man, not by his name, but... Oh, you know what I mean. Yes, I do. I'd... I'd like you to keep that date. But I... Could. We'll provide the other woman, a policewoman. Oh, no, I couldn't. I know I can't ask you to take the risk. But that's exactly what you are doing. It's up to you. I don't worry. That girl will be with you. She'll look after you. I'm worried about this. It's dangerous, we know that. Are you sure Monica will be all right? Look, as, uh, as far as we're concerned, we'll do everything possible to protect your daughter tonight. She's all I've got. And she's all we've got, Mr. Marshall, if you uh, don't mind my saying so. But don't worry, uh, we'll look after her. Why the hell did you have to pick up birds that live so far out of town? Ah, Cornell, it's not that far. Anyway, it's best to travel when it's light. Oh, yes. Monica reckons her friend's a bit of all right. Yeah, I bet she is. <laughs> Couldn't I do something, Inspector? No, just leave it to us. We'll take care of it. Well, we're ready. Right. 
got plenty of time. No need for this course. The street's just around the next corner. Go around the block again. late. He said seven o'clock. How late are they? Twenty-five minutes. Sure now, Monica. Take care of her, Brenda. Of course, sir. Oh, and Brenda. Sir? Yourself, too. No chances. If it's a toss-up, let them get away. Very well, sir. You're late. Car trouble. Oh, never mind. Where are we going? Oh, sorry. This is my friend, Brenda Davis. Come on out, Ted. Meet the girls. You like me, mate, Brenda? One of the best. Sure I will, Bob. Where are we going? Got a surprise, Linda. Right. See you, love. Please, hold it right there. You hold it, copper. Bad in three seconds, I'm going to blow your head off. Now throw that gun away. You wanted a bird. All right? Yes, sir. Understand, you're under no obligation whatsoever. It's a personal matter. Hmm. Why should he want to see you? I've known Baird a long time. Yes. I better get over there. There's nothing much I can do for him, but it's the least I can do. He doesn't have all that much time left.
question. Easy, Ted. Take it easy. One pick and you win. That's what I've been up against all my life. I never picked up one card for gin in my life. Life's more than the game of gin, Rummy, Ted. <laughs> I guess so. Thanks for coming out. Forget it. I've known you a long time, Ted. Sure there's nobody else you want to see? Funny the things you remember. When I was a kid, sitting on the kitchen floor, all those grown ups, you know, just walking around me. I can see it now. All those legs, not one of them are my father's. You see, Buchanan, I never knew my old man. <laughs> when I get rid of those, You've got a long life to worry about. No more dangerous than driving a car? Yeah, life's a great big joke, isn't it? You asked if there was someone else. It was only my grandmother. She died ten years ago. She worked all her life. She looked after all of us. Other people's washing. But she did it for us. <laughs> for me and my mother. <laughs> she loved us. Neither of us was any good. Life's funny. I remember when I was a kid, 19. I found this little kitten once. It was all bitten and smashed up. <laughs> it was half dead and I, I took him to a vet. I saved him. Cost me ten quid. <laughs> you could get a lot for ten quid those days. Lots of grog and women. You know? You know why I'm telling you all this? I think so, Ted. Well, why? Because you're a human being. And so am I, Ted. So let's not torture each other, eh? Me torture you? What about me? You care about me? Yes. It's good. When I hang, you feel bad about that. Yes, I will. There's one copper I know has got a heart. We've all got hearts, Ted. You remember me. The priest said you didn't want to see him. Not the priest! I want to talk to the priest! I asked to talk to you. Sure you made the right choice? Yes. Yeah. 